What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Warehouse Series. My name is Tim and if you are new to the channel, I welcome you. Uh, you know, so just let me tell you a little bit about the channel real quick. Uh, first, I got the YouTube part of this channel where I am uh, doing everything in my power to help you out as a selector. Uh, you know, I put polls out and the selection part is what took off on this channel. Uh, every once in a while, I'm going to put a, a forklift video out, but the main part of this uh, vi uh, channel is going to be selection videos. Uh, with that being said, I also have a Discord. Uh, that link is going to be in the description below. We almost have 100 members over there, and it is I think it's so beneficial to our new selectors because they come over there and they put their work out. You know, they give us uh, pictures of their work that they're doing, asking questions of, you know, hey, I'm struggling with this. And I either put a video out on it or I personally help them out on the uh, Discord or you have other members that are working in that type of area helping you out on the Discord. So, and I already could tell by like some of these people over there that give us their work, a week later they're giving us pictures and you could tell they're already improving uh, their work. So I think it's a very unique thing to our uh, warehouse selectors because there is a lot of people that cannot make it in this uh, type of uh, work. They just cannot figure out the pallet. So if you have a whole group of people helping you trying to do that, because nobody wants to help you in the warehouse, right? Everyone's on a standard and they just don't got time to sit there and take time out of their day to help you. So come to this channel, go to my Discord and you're gonna get as much help as I could possibly give you. So with that being said, if you're not a subscriber, if you could do that, hit the notification bell. It's just gonna let you know when I post videos. Any questions, comments, you can leave them in Discord or in the comment section below. And if you guys can give me a thumbs up, it's much appreciated. Uh, and share my content. You know, if you're a new selector at a warehouse and you know somebody else that's struggling in the warehouse, just say, hey, you know, uh, there's a guy on YouTube, the Warehouse Series, and he's been helping me out and maybe he could help you out too. I'd appreciate it if you guys could start sharing my content. Uh, so let's get to today's video. All right, guys, so the first picture I wanna talk about is this one right here. Let's get right to the bottom. Three Hawaiian punches straight across, I love it. Uh, you know, I had someone uh, show me pictures, uh, you know, they were taking my, uh, what I'm saying, and maybe I need to be a little bit more clear on this, is like pointing cases inward when possible. Uh, they were turning all their cases inward when they had an opportunity to take like two pregos and turn them side by side to fill in the pallet. You want to fill in the pallet as much as possible. So if you could turn two cases like prego side by side to fill in a gap, uh, then do that. But if you're hanging off the edge like a lot, then, then I would turn the cases inward. Uh, so when possible... Uh, you know, you want to fill in any type of gap that's on that pallet. But if you don't have that opportunity to do that, then I try to, it, as much as possible, face those cases towards the inside, like the second row on here. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about. Second row, you got two cases facing inward. The arrow is pointing up. It should be pointing back. Uh, you know, like the T's and the cross that I talk about, but putting smaller cases in the middle. They did that perfectly. Uh, that's exactly how I would build my pallet. And then the white arrow, something unique I want to talk about. So I'm guessing these are tidy cats here. Uh, the bottom yellow bags of tidy cats, if you could see that corner is actually a little lower than the uh, middle brown box. And the case on top, it leveled everything out. And that's one thing I was just telling someone uh, a little bit ago about dog food and these cat litters is I love these because if you have a little bit of a lower corner, all you gotta do is just slap the contents around in that bag just to make it level again. So that's one thing that's unique about having dog food bags and cat litter, and even flour for that matter, or uh, baking you know, all your cooking stuff, uh, is you can move the contents of that bag around. So if you need to level it out, just slap it around, level it out. And if you need to make your corner higher, then slap the inside of the bag and it's gonna move the contents to the outside. Believe me, that works. Uh, so give that a try the next time. I am a little ridiculous when it comes to my dog food pallets. I literally slap like every bag a couple times. <laughs> it's, I, I slap that, I, it's ridiculous, but it gets a level pallet when you do it. Uh, another thing I want to say real quick is someone had dog food and they, uh, you know, I, I always try to leave as much wood open as possible. If I, you almost get a feeling of if you're gonna have a lot of dog food or not. If I'm gonna have four rows of dog, or dog food, then I'm putting it down. But sometimes I try to column stack uh, my bigger bags, like they were saying the long, you know, the long dog food bags, the 55 pounders and stuff like that. Uh, they're a little harder to stack on. Sometimes I column stack those uh, bags and then I will build up 
to the level of that and then try to tie in from that area. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a video just on that alone. So let's get to the next picture. All right, so in this picture right here, it's sort of gonna correlate to what I was, I was just talking about on the first picture. Uh, you know, my green arrows, uh, on the back of the palette or the front of the palette, like you see the white boxes up here, uh, as long as you have a like case next to it, that it, it does work out running in the length of the palette. Uh, you know, but I still like to point cases inward as much as possible. Now, if I only had like one of these boxes, like the white boxes, I would point it towards the middle. Now, something tells me that maybe there's another two white boxes on the other side of this. I don't know, but I'm guessing they had like cases and they stacked them going this way. Uh, but if I only had a couple, I would go the opposite direction, guys, towards the middle of my palette. Uh, but I just want to show you that it is okay to put cases running the length of the palette, but keep them on the outside edges, the outside corners. Do not put them in this section. This is the section of the palette that I will not run cases the length of the palette. Uh, so those uh, white boxes and the brown boxes that I showed that had the green arrows on in the back, I would never put them in this section of the palette like they are stacked and then having other stuff going this way. I find it to be people really screw up their palettes by doing this. So any of the sections on your palette in the middle, so this side, the other side, the front and the back, in the middle section, I will never run cases the length. Or like, you know what I mean? Like go in the opposite direction. I always have them facing towards the middle of the palette. Uh, I, I just, I find that to be a lot easier because what happens is, is you start getting a lower inside which is fine, but then you play catch up. So you put another case down, now you're like this, now you're like this, now you're like this. And that happens to be how your whole palette goes. You just keep staggering cases all the way up, and then you get that whole corner, that those two sections are just gonna rock and possibly fall. Uh, I have never seen anybody build a good palette from putting cases, you know, the running lengthwise in this section of the palette. Uh, the only time it's good is if you have a light case that you're putting on the inside or if you have a full layer. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. But in this section, I always run cases towards the middle of the palette. So let's get to the next picture. All right, guys. So in this picture right here, real quickly, I want to look at the bottom two white cases where I have the yellow arrow at. Uh, you know, whether or not they put these two white cases together, then they realize later on, you know what, this is going to work better off if I separate them a little bit. Uh, you know, I... People put white cases together, which is fine. They'll put these two white cases side by side and they leave them side by side. So if they would have put those two jars on top, which is fine, but now they're going to have about a four inch uh, overhang in the middle of their palette. So that jar is not going to be centered on the white case and it's going to be stirring the sag. And that's how you get palettes to dip in the middle and fall. So whether or not they separate these white cases off the beginning or they took the time to do it whenever they realized that they're going to have a more sturdier palette uh, to separate them. So just a little hint there, if you have cases together and you see that there's going to be an opportunity to separate those cases to get a solid base, then I suggest you do that. Uh, the red line, once again, column stacked basically all the way up to the waist high. I always talk about that. And look, everything is tied in from that red line up. Uh, that's how you tie pallets in. That's how you can call them stack halfway up and then tie in the rest of the pallet. This is a perfect constructed pallet. Very nice job. Let's get to the next picture. All right, guys, and the last thing I wanna talk about is open cases. I've talked about open cases in the past, like tomatoes and stuff of that nature. Uh, this is not only an open top, but an open side. Uh, so if you have like the celery here, if you have this, never put this open side towards the outside of your palette. You want it facing in, okay? You want the strongest side of that case facing outward, and that would be the, the side that is not open, the one, the side that has a box. Now, if you get two of them, do this. Face them towards each other. That way, now, you don't have to worry about that case having any problems whatsoever. So now the goal is to get a bigger case that's gonna fit on top of both of these salary boxes. All right, guys, so this last picture right here, as you can see, I talked about this in a previous video about back and under stuff. It's not always the greatest thing to back under things. Uh, sometimes it just makes the order harder than what it should be. 
and this is the prime example of that. So these green beans are plastic containers, plastic cases, and they actually have little nubs on all four corners where they fit right into each other. So they're gonna lock into each other. Uh, me personally, I would have stacked five and five. Just call them stack these straight up the front of my jack. Five and five, and then I could have dropped the four carrots down on flat piece of wood. Uh, I would have left them as a four block as they have them right behind my uh, green beans. I would have dropped that foxy, the lettuce that's upside down up there. I would have dropped that straight down into my corner. All the white cases, those asparagus, as I call them problem cases, they would have been right in the middle of my palate uh, or even on top of the uh, carrots. And guys, this palette could have been very well constructed. So whatever little time they saved by backing under 10 of these green beans, I guarantee they wasted it by trying to stack this palette. So back unders are an always a great thing. These open cases, you need to call them, stack them. You need to keep them together. I have witnessed way too many times people spreading open boxes around their palette whenever they have closed boxes that they're covering that open box with. You want to stack on open boxes as little as possible. So what's the solution? Stack them together. Put them in one corner or as, as little as the palette as possible and stack them straight up and keep your closed boxes to stack on. Uh, so hopefully it made it to the store looking like this. I don't know. But guys, Discord, keep sending your pictures. Uh, and I'm glad that I could, you know, make videos just for certain people to help them out. I will keep doing it. Just, you know, uh, let's keep growing this channel and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.